Well, it's Shakespeare, our national bod. Just because he's dead, do I have to like him? No, 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 you don't. I take it I'm not speaking here, Glenn, to a connoisseur of the theatre, then. On the contrary, John, I enjoyed a stunning performance of Dead Earnest by the Swanage Players in 1967. <laughs> Well, you're not a regular theatre girl, so last week must have been murder for you because we also sent you for your second item into the theatre in Sheffield where the play was in Spanish. Gracias, hombre. Yeah. Buenas noches. ¿Quiere comer algo? No, no tengo apetito. De nada. ¿Cómo vas así por la casa? Como si fuera la primera vez. Y la señora dijo que tardaría. Estoy agotado, Pepita. No hay prisa. Le va su whisky. Esta noche no, Pepita. Andrew, I understand this is quite a serious play. Um, could you just tell me the basic plot? Mm -hmm. Well, it's serious in that it portrays problems in contemporary Spain post-Franco post era. Mm -hmm. And uh, the protagonist, he was a, he's an ex-minister. He's a minister under Franco, and now he's striving for power under socialism, and uh, reveals the dilemma he is going through because he's haunted by the past. He's haunted by murders, memory of murders he committed, he was responsible for in the past. It's quite a violent play then, basically. It, well, yes, it's very, well, violent and passionate. Yeah. Passionate and violent mm. at the same time. Very yeah. rich, very rich play. Eres tú quien lo hace. Si te niegas, ya sabes. And for those of you who want to see Vallejo's play, it's on at Sheffield University for three nights, starting on the 18th. Uh, I can't believe that that, at least as something you don't understand in a foreign language, uh, didn't appeal to your sense of the absurd, Glenn, at least. John, I enjoyed it immensely. I knew it. In fact, uh, about two years ago, um, I went to see a performance in Amsterdam by a Dutch comedian, which lasted for two and a half hours, and... The only words I understood throughout the entire evening were Bob Marley and Yamaha organ. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? I had a very pleasant evening, John. Oh, good. Well, we eventually tried to take pity on you and get you out of the theatre and into your own world, which is the world of art. Living paintings are young artists led by uh, Stephen Taylor Woodrow, I think was an ex-pupil of yours. Right. I've seen them perform. They are strange because they sort of exhibit themselves. What do they do in the gallery? Well, basically, they, um, they dial their clothing out of grey or maroon colour and they wear these special uh, kind of um, hideous contact lenses and they hang on the walls as living paintings. And the effect is, is comic, but it also is slightly sinister. Yeah, so if you need a, a slight scare, they're on in Bradford from the 18th. That's living paintings. Before we go on, let's just speak a little about your own work, Glenn, because I know so many people who love the books and the cartoons, but they think you're a funny man. They think you're a cartoonist. Now, what do you think you are? I think I'm in trouble, John. Um, <laughs> I think, really, that um, I don't like to be called cartoonist because that means that people think, well, be funny then. But, you know, if you say that you're an artist, then it's somehow... OK. Mm. OK to be an artist, eh? Yeah. Well, Glenn's work anyway is always witty and quirkily imaginative, and we hope some of you have those qualities. Uh, we don't want you to draw cartoons, but we'd like you to have a go at our photo booth competition. You can send in any number of pictures in any or all of the four categories, which are portraiture, obviously, still life, less obviously, landscape. Landscape? Well, after that, anything goes. And that's the name of the fourth category. At the end of the series, there'll be winners, prizes, and an exhibition of the best entries at the National Museum of Photography in Bradford. The keeper of the museum, and incidentally, one of the judges, is Colin Ford, who has his own ideas as to what is required. And the first thing is a recreation of the magic of what early photography was like. Because, you know, the first photographs are actually rather like this. They were in a box, 
you sat in a box like this, and we've got one upstairs in the museum, and you saw through a pinhole in one wall what was going on in the world outside. That must have been magic to the first people who saw it. I want to see that kind of magic somehow recaptured in this competition. I also want to see not all those arty, critical words. I just want to see originality. I want to see something that surprises me, something I've never seen before. Well, Colin's one of the judges, I'm the second, and this lady here is the third. And ten years ago, she was in a photo booth looking like this, and is now in ours looking like this. Jules from Bradford is not only a photo booth fanatic, and he is just a few from a collection, but professionally, she's a poet. It fell out of an old purse, a little photo torn from a strip of four. We each kept one, I remember. Me and little Sal and Mick and John, all crammed in the photo booth, pulling daft faces. Our youth and happiness crystallised forever in those little pictures. We each had one. I wonder if they kept theirs. And Jules will be back later in the series as one of our guest critics. And tonight's guest critic, Glenn Baxter, has agreed to be one of the judges in our photo booth competition. And I see you've got yours back already, Glenn. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is definitely you. Oh, dear. Well, there you are. Four categories, four judges. And the closing date for the entries is the 31st of March. And the address to send them to is Northern Lights Photo Booth Competition, BBC TV, Woodhouse Lane, Leeds, LS2, 9PX. I'll be interested to see what you get up to. And to find out what people do in there, we hid a camera in the booth at Leeds Station, and with the subject's kind permission, here are the results. <laughs> That's it. Before we go, you can have a listen to more of Acrobats of Desire and have a look at some of the events that are currently on in the region. But come on, let's get to work. Oh, bye and see, see you next Friday. Right. 
We've got all night, but we haven't got all week. Can't cause nothing's worse than an uncommon 